Hello everyone, this is a one control work quick play of Wii Play Motion, the Nintendo Wii. Uh, like the previous Wii Play game, which I have done a quick play of, so if you want to see that um, <laughs> original one, uh, you can look at it either at the end of this video or go there first if you want. Um, but like the original Wii Play, uh, this game comes with a, a, a Wii Remote Controller, at least initially came, you know, it's been a while since this game came out. Um, but, uh, yeah, essentially this game would come with controllers, so essentially, uh, you know, a, a Wii Remote was about $40, and, and so this game, in some ways, you could look at it as like a $10 minigame collection that would be, uh, be included, uh, with this controller purchase. Uh, this title screen thing is kind of weird, so don't worry about it. Um, um, so yeah, so, so like, uh, like the original Wii Play, um, this game kind of proves or tries to prove uh, some of the functionality of the controller. So Wii Sports focused very much on the accelerometers. So if you don't know, the original Wii Remote only had accelerometers in it in terms of motion control stuff, which limits what you can capture. Um, you know, you can do, you know, left to right, up and down. Uh, you know, there's a, a general like capture of movement, but there's not really a capture of space and where a controller is located. So a great way you can like compare is look at the original Red Steel or Red Steel 2, where Red Steel 2 very much has you like swiping to do a, a like canned slice, where Red Steel or Red Steel 1 has you doing that, and Red Steel 2 allows you like move the sword in real time and like you know move it around a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so we play itself uh, didn't really use the accelerometers much. It focused more on the IR pointer, which is a very strong part of the. Uh, the system, um, the, the Wii remote, because basically it allows you to point the screen and it can track where you're pointing at the screen and it'll know like where your, your controller is pointing. Press the B button on accident while doing that. Um, so, you know, you, you kind of, I kind of feel like you would expect this game to be focused on what the IR pointer can do in, in combination to the gyro controls of the Wii Motion Plus, but it actually doesn't do anything with the IR controller as well. As far as I can tell, the IR is not used at all in this game for the most part, with the exception of selecting items from this menu here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go in and get, get into this. Um, the, the one thing you might be wondering why I'm on the floor, uh, the reason being is that uh, when I originally recorded this quick play, I tried it without a camera and... Um, found that I was explaining a lot of how the controller worked, and I think it would be better just show you how. Uh, but to show you how, I had to set up this crotch cam. So the, the camera's gonna be staring into my crotch as I play games and, and use the Wii Remote. Um, but instead of starting the video with you staring directly into my crotch, I figure I'd, you know, talk to you here on the floor first, and then I'll get up in my chair and, and we'll do the crotch thing. This is actually technically my third time trying to record this. Had a technical issue the, the second time around, but you know, third time's a charm. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to try not to be an old man, get up on there without hurting myself. Now I'm in this chair. You got the Wii Remote right there. Um, so very much like the original Wii Play, basically it's just a series of mini games here. There is like an unlock process to these mini games, but it's very simple of just basically playing through the mini games. Um, so one of the most, um, you know, one of the most iconic games of the original Wii Play was this uh, Pose Me game, and uh, Pose Me on in the original Wii Play was very IR focused, where you basically point at your character and move them around, and use the A and the B buttons to um, basically select which pose you're in. Um, so you would select the pose, you'd twist the controller to kind of like fit the character into the, into a bubble and move them around on screen to like get them to different bubbles and different spots of the screen. In this case, they, they, they kind of repurposed the mini game for the newer control scheme. Uh, so one thing you'll see kind of immediately is, um, you know, how, how, like when I move this controller it's pretty much, you know, I'm using a stand-in for my Wii, or for my me here. So, like, you know, he's pretty accurately following my direction on the controllers, with the exception of when he actually gets into the uh, hole here, that he locks in into that slot. So you can kind of see the, me, like, move the Wii remote and point it in the direction that it needs to go. And, uh, and he pretty accurately reflects that. Uh, one thing you'll notice here, like, right after this little, uh, collection of diamond things you have these a lot of mini games have this little part of the game where it's like hey you need to press a on the button on the screen uh the the wii motion plus is pretty notorious for losing its tracking at some point uh it just doesn't have a great context for for where you're at in space um and and i'm 
I'm guessing pointing the controller to the screen and pressing the A button is attempting to to reduce the amount of like tracking lost, basically. Um, but to me, that 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 like point that we went at the screen doesn't really seem to resolve issues so much as it just like minimizes issues. Um, so if you do have any long-term issues with the uh, with the controller, or not long-term, but like you know, it's just at some point it's just completely off from what it from what it originally was. Uh, you can pause the game. You see in the top right corner there where it says checking. Anytime it says that, you can just put the controller down on a flat surface, let it sit there, and it will resync, and then you pick it back up. Um, you know that can be you know a little tedious depending on the game it is and like how much moving the controller kind of gets it out of whack i will say at least like once per session you'll have to probably sit there and re reorient the controller at some point at least um but you know sometimes it just kind of fails and you don't really know why or you just make like an extreme movement which the Wii remote doesn't know how to handle and you just got to handle it that way so Anyways, that's that for that, and I just think it's a cool way that they, they took a game that was popular in the first one and kind of reworked it for what this controller can do. And, you know, they didn't, it doesn't necessarily improve it, it just kind of it offers something different. Uh, but on the other side of that, you also have Trigger Twist here, which uh, if you played the original Wii Play, there's basically a target shooting minigame in, in that game where you are on a static screen, you shot targets using the B button and shooting, you know, individual targets by pointing at the screen. Um, this is quite different at least in terms of uh, mechanics. So this is the third level of the game, um, or third stage of the game. And uh, so the first one is, is very reminiscent of the original Wii Play, where you're like in a field, and you can kind of rotate around and shoot things. And the second one's uh, kind of like the Ninja Castle in uh, Nintendo Land, where um, where little ninjas run around and you like throw, throw like little shurikens and stuff. Um, so this is a, like an on-rail shooter, this final one here. And one thing that might not be super uh, apparent on screen right now is that I'm not actually pointing to the TV for the most part. Like, I'm actually pointing way below the TV right now. Uh, the reason being is that this game doesn't look at the pointer at all as far as I can tell. Like, I can hold this here and I'm still aiming. Like, I'm still covering this up and I still can shoot accurately and everything. Um, that's because this reminds mostly on gyro controls. And I will say I'm surprised how accurate this is. Um, but there is, like, a, a lost... Uh, I, I feel like I, I lose a, a level of satisfaction for not being able to point directly at the screen because you're gonna see here as like things surround me and stuff that when I point to shoot some of these things like way over here I have to point like way off the TV screen to the side like I'm just pointing off into the nothingness right now and there's no real like you know there's no real um, like I don't know how to put it. Like a lot of a lot of Wii games are about like you know making you feel like you're doing some action. So like you know pointing at the screen, making you feel like you're shooting, shooting a gun or something like that. Like uh, Metal Honor's Heroes 2 does that very well. This game doesn't really give you a feeling of anything because it, it it's just kind of abstract of what you're what you're doing when you're pointing the controller. And you know as somebody who understands how this controller works for the most part and and like you know like I have understanding how the technology works and things like that. I would wonder if somebody who did not understand how this game works, like if they would understand that not pointing at the screen would, you know, not do anything. Because if you point at the screen, it's not very accurate to where you're pointing. It's only really point accurate to how you move the, the gyro itself here. So that's pretty much this mini game. Uh, you know, shoot stuff and get points. You know, the accuracy, you know, the more you shoot stuff without missing, the higher point value you get. So you can see my, my point multiplier goes up as I hit people without losing any, any hits. So, so yeah, I think that's a case of like a mini game that, you know, well, there's good intentions behind it and it's fascinating to see the technology work pretty well in that regard. Um, it doesn't particularly add anything to the game. If anything, I think it only really detracts from the game itself. Um, I think this this skip mode is actually kind of like it's not as in depth as like golf or something on on uh, Wii Sports, but it does kind of give a very similar feeling and and at the same time also like introduces some new mechanics that th this controller can offer. So so basically uh, you choose your little your thing here. The ultimate goal is to basically skip rocks here. Um, so you know as you can see I can kind of move things around freely. And everything like that you have a little meter on the right that looks very similar to the golf meter um so things it's looking for is the speed at which i throw it the angle of which i throw it um and then also the timing at which i i release kind of thing so i think the big thing that we motion plus offers here is the ability to track the angle of it um 
And so the ultimate goal is to kind of skip the rock as much as possible by, you know, doing the optimal speed, optimal release, and also the optimal angle of, of throwing the rock. I don't know if the different colored rocks really play any part in, like, what, like, the attributes of a rock is, if it's, like, heavier or more likely to, you know, bounce or something like that. But there are some special rocks, you know, as in a very Nintendo way, as we'll see here in a second. Whoops. Whoopsie. So look now. So I did that motion. Now my tracking's all kind of messed up. I did get it back actually, but my tracking was kind of stuck facing the other way. I'm doing very bad right now. <laughs> so let's see. So I got a little a little frog rock. So we're gonna we're gonna get frog noises when we throw this. So so some of the rocks are just pictures on them, and they just make noises and have little effects that come around them. And then other rocks are a bit more. Um, involving so we have like this lightning bolt one and this is probably the most like a uh, most visible one where like there's this lightning animation and it kind of skips back and forth left and right on it so i did really bad there uh i got like half my usual score i think or my best score at least i think i have like 160 157 yeah so so yeah that, that game kind of shows off you know some of the more intricacies of what you can do and there is like a, a mode where you can do it and it basically sh tells you how you're messing up your throw and gives you advice on on how to you know better better play the game um some of these games i think don't necessarily need the wii motion plus to function i think this treasure twirl mode might be one of them um this is a, this is a pretty fun mini game though basically you're um you're you're getting uh, treasure by by going left and right by using the Wiimote like this, and then you're kind of loosening or uh, removing the amount of uh, string you have, so you you go further down the water. One thing I will recommend uh, with this mini game, and I had this problem last quick play, I did this. Uh, take the Wii Remote strap off because it will twist around your wrist and it gets very frustrating uh, for, you know, a system where Nintendo always wants to use, use the Wii strap no matter what. Uh, it's a little weird to me that, you know, they didn't think about that with this. Um, whoops. Okay. So, and then kind of the goal is to collect these treasure chests. Uh, there's a gold one, a silver one, and a bronze one, and you want to try to, you know, get it back up to the surface. Uh, when you get hit, you lose oxygen, so, you know, the intention is to try not to get hit. You also can drop your, uh, chest if you don't, if you don't, um, if you do get hit. So, so, you have to go back for them. I think there's a silver one right down here. Yep, so I lost my bronze chest, so I need to get that. Go back up here. Dang it. Got it. Okay. I'm probably gonna die, though. I don't know if there's any, um, oxygen refills nearby. There's one. Do. But yeah, I feel like this probably could have been done with like a normal Wii remote. I could be wrong about that, but like, you know, games like Mario Kart and stuff like that, um, I think do fairly similar tilting at least, whether or not it could track, you know, the, the rotation of the Wii remote like this, I'm not quite sure. I feel like it could though. There's there's some interesting early Wii games that do some stuff with like rotating the controller and stuff. Uh, Medal of Honor, or not Medal of Honor, Call of Duty, um, uh, three actually I had not the Wii remote, but the nunchuck where you like twist it to like set a bomb and which was kind of neat. So, so yeah, some of these mini games are, are pretty simple. Most of these mini games have at least like, you know, four to five stages. Some of them are a bit more complex actually. So, so one of the more complex games of this thing is the star shuttle mode and the star shuttle mode basically has you controlling the spaceship to build space stations. So as you, as you build um, as you, you, you get these parts, you basically have these little connectors that you have to connect. So there's the, the end piece that I have to connect to. And I have a part on my ship, a little like satellite dish looking thing. And so, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of these mini games require you press a button. And so what's interesting about this, you know, obviously I have my, my full control of my ship here as I kind of rotate it around. Uh, but there's also, um, a bunch of jets on this ship and how the jets control just depend on, on which way you're facing. So if I press left... I'm going to go left, but if I press left this way, I'm going forward just because, you know, it's based off the tr like where my ship is facing. Um, and then A and B lets you go up and down. You can only do one jet at a time, though. Um, and so you don't want to go too fast. Like, I'm getting an alert signal here because if I hit a wall or anything during in that alert phase, I'll crash. And there's also these little, like, storm things where you need to point the controller at the screen to, I think, prevent losing your, 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 um, whatever it is, uh, piece of the space station so the goal is to kind of fly across this area get to the other side you know within a decent you know speed 
and 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 try to place this piece. So we got, we got, we did pretty well there. Sometimes it's a little more rough, where you have to sit there and kind of like finagle it a little bit. Uh, we'll try one of the harder ones. But as you can see, this is the final stage of this one. But um, we built the space station here. So you basically build this thing from scratch to the start by doing these little missions. And you see the space station slowly assemble over time, which is pretty cool. Um, some of the later stages are particularly are particularly harder. Uh, one one part that is harder is that um, you have to collect your, your piece of the space station um, first. So it's not just something you already have. So in this case, uh, you see the pieces over there in front of me. Um, but like how you pick it up will determine how it's stuck to your ship. So you'll end up, you know, in situations where you have to um, um, kind of rework how you approach because this thing gets stuck onto you in a weird fashion. Another satellite dish, actually. So let's so try to get this cargo. We can't change the camera at all, so it's a little... Um, be a little difficult. I'm about to get smacked by this thing. Okay. Generally, as long as you're not going fast enough, you won't get damaged from getting hit by something. It just is, um, just kind of, you know, gets in your way. Okay, we got it. Not the best connection, but not the worst. Uh, sometimes there are power-ups in the area that will help you, like, reorient this thing. So I think I see one there to the left. Uh, and there's also a vortex there trying to pull me in, so I need to uh, try to stay away while also not going so fast that when I hit these gears, I explode. Which is kind of what's happening a little bit right now. So, oof, okay. We're doing all right. So we come down here. Going to try to start slowing down. And if uh, if you don't quite hit this just right, the, the little poles will hit the walls and then just kind of like spread out a little bit. Like they don't, they don't just like sit flush with the wall. So, um, you can see that the blue one's like catching, so it doesn't quite hold the same shape right now as it normally does. So, so a lot of it's just kind of, you know, getting, getting right here and, and trying your best to get in a position where, you know, both can, uh, can touch properly. So like that one's bending now, but I got it on there. Cool. <clears throat> and so you just build space stations over time and stuff. So that's pretty much that. Uh, I would say that mode gets a little tedious, honestly. I, I didn't enjoy the second half of it very much. I just got kind of tired of it. Uh, one mode that does some really interesting stuff here is the spooky search mode, or game. Um, this game might not come off super well on, on you know, in a video, but we'll see. So basically, we have the speaker on the Wii remote, which so you can kind of hear there. And then, uh, and then uh, we're going to have these ghosts that are basically going to populate theoretically populate my room is what they what they're doing or, or or what the intention is basically um so basically these ghosts pop up they're gonna fly off off screen and the whole point is to basically use my wii remote to try to find these ghosts and then pull them back on screen so there's one to the right of me so i don't know if you can hear that but it's beeping it starts beeping faster looking for it there we go, got it. I'm gonna press B button, drag it on screen, put it in there. So this whole mode is basically, oh, sometimes they'll show up on screen too. Um, so you, get, you do have to keep an eye on the screen a little bit. Got another one. Okay. So there's 10 ghosts in the room right now. Oh, got them. I'm not sure they can kidnap the Mies or what. Above. Got him. All right, and so some of these ghosts, like this watermelon one, put up a fight. So very Luigi's Mansion like of like you know sitting here pulling, pulling against them and then dropping them in. But I think this is like a really, really cool use of the controller. Um, you know, it just makes you think about the uh, controller in a way you you wouldn't normally. Um, and I think this is more exciting than like you know the whole we play or we party thing, where uh, oh where um you know you hide the controller in the room and go like drop like have people try to find it basically but, you know i haven't played a lot of wii party so i can't sit there and say too much about it but but i just think it's like a creative use of the controller and it's, it's a creative use that i think enhances the game uh come on there you go. 
Got him in. Okay, two more. Got him. Alright. We'll go ahead and finish this one real quick. One more. Got him. And there's always like a boss ghost too. did it so yeah it's like i think that's like a really smart way to use the controller in this game uh whether or not that would be useful for anything else i'm not quite sure <laughs> but you know it's it's there and something you can do um this is another mini game that i feel like you know probably could be done with the original wii remote but maybe maybe tilt wise you know is not the most complex game basically you hold the wii remote straight up uh which is again representing your me and uh and then once you get in here you basically um have the goal of collecting these gems and then as you collect these gems um it will uh unlock the next part of the level to go collect more gems at and, and finish the goal so so one tip i will give you about this game is if you press the a button it makes you like dash downwards and it like helps you jump higher too so like i highly recommend that because i spent a while having a lot of problems with this game because i wasn't able to um um, dash properly. <laughs> like, I, was, I had to rely off just bouncing up the walls and stuff at the angle I was I was given, and that's, uh, not very good. So you get little power-ups, so you have, like, these little other guys that are also collecting, uh, gems with me now. Um, and they kind of mimic your movements, I think, for the most part. Um, this one gives you double score on these. And I think it can make you bounce more. Uh, I think the magnet one's probably the best. There we go. I think that might actually be a magnet one on the right there. Come on, get up there. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if we can get it real quick. Whoops. Oops. Almost there. Give me the magnet. Oh my gosh, I can do it. Got it. Okay, so the magnet one basically sucks everything in. I think it's probably the most useful. And then you just kind of hit the goal. Um, this game does do a lot of stuff where... Uh, I think We Play was maybe not so good about this, where it basically reuses a lot of stuff. Um, so you can get more content out of these games. So so in the case of that Gem Attack Hunt one, they, they don't actually change any content here. The only thing they do is really change the objective, which kind of changes how you play this level. So, you know, in the gym mode, the goal is to kind of collect gems and get through as fast as possible. This is just like a, a time attack mode. So it basically just lets you um, play the exact same level, um, but just under the the limit of, hey, go as fast as you can to the end. Um, everything else doesn't matter. So just go. And so, you know, as you build paths and stuff in this level you can kind of figure out what works best whoops there we go um and then say so like you know other other games are represented through like different types of stages and stuff like the shooting mode one has the on rail shooter one versus like just the gallery mode and things like that so i think each level has like a couple of variations or each minigame has like a couple of variations that uh that work work pretty well um some of these games also have like a decent amount of depth. I feel like this game I'm not particularly good at, but but there is something here uh, to it. It's this uh, basically this this umbrella racing game. You um you sit there and open your umbrella to to get a certain amount of speed. So if I open like my umbrella this way, I go pretty slow. But if I open the umbrella in the wind, I get that little like sonic boom looking thing. And, um, and I get a lot of speed that way. So, you know, obviously at a part like this, where I'm mostly going forward, uh, you know, it's pretty much just, hey, hold the umbrella straight forward. But uh, there are some, like, a, there's like a long jump mode with this one where you can basically, you know, you work with the wind to try to get as far as you can um, uh, by, you know, holding the umbrella the correct direction to get as much air time as possible. Because if you have the umbrella in the correct direction while you're jumping, uh, you get more more time um, in the air, basically. All right. Ooh. You can close the umbrella to kind of slow down too, which is kind of nice. It's 
so I didn't do particularly good there, but yeah. I would not say I'm good at this game. I'd say I'm not good at a lot of these Wii Play Motion games, but I did I did do gold on all of them, and then uh, I platinumed a handful as well. So, you know, I did well enough. Probably won't ever 100% this game. So, you know, if I had been more on point with that, uh, with that, you know, catching the wind properly, whoops, um, I probably could have flown up to that upper level and, and done that, so. Uh, a lot of these games have multiplayer, but I haven't done the multiplayer really, so I can't say for sure. I wonder if like getting the motion like tracking out of sync might be a problem, so you have to like you know frequently do the whole like you know press the controller down and 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 resync it. Um, this is probably the game that probably has the most problems with um, uh, sync running out, and I think or sync or the losing tracking. I think it's because it's a lot of movement and a lot of motions like this that the uh, the game has a little trouble uh, keeping up with sometimes. This game also presents another issue where a lot of these games expect a level of accuracy. So like in this case, I have this like meter at the bottom of the screen there where the meter builds up more if I don't miss any of these moles or like, you know, don't just randomly swing at nothing. And uh, I found that um, that little miss there was my fault uh, for sure. But sometimes the, uh, the, um, the controller will just kind of swing on its own even though you made a very small movement uh that or like the the you swing down and while you're swinging down the the mallet kind of like magnetizes to one of these holes and then one of the holes has like a me in it that you're not supposed to hit and it's a little uh a little frustrating um but you know it, it, there's a lot of accuracy to it and uh you know you can kind of go around and do this but like sometimes you just you try to hit something and, you know, right now it's not doing it actually, surprisingly. Uh, I think every other time it's it's done it, but like I'll, I'll, I'll attack something like that. Like that right there, I just did it where, where um, it, it swiped twice down, even though I only, only swung once. And I think it's the, I think it's the upward, like right there. It's, I think it's the upward momentum on the, uh, the Wii remote that sometimes it will mistake as, as swiping down. So you'll do like a double a double hammer, hammer swipe, which you know if the enemy only has one HP, then makes you hit the ground and you know not properly, um, um, you know, not properly hit things with, the, with accuracy, um, which you know matters in this case for getting that bonus. And also there's a boss fight at the end that also matters at you getting that uh filling that meter up and using the mallet. Same thing with the shooting mini game, you get a bonus for shooting things basically. Um, I think that if one of the like standout features of um, of um, the original we play was a game called Tanks, and it just it, it just it was really solid. And I think a lot of people agreed that like if Tanks was broken out into like a WiiWare game, it probably would be pretty reasonable to play, like pretty fun, and reasonable, and worth the time and money. Uh, I think Teetering Tower or Teetering I forget what this is called, like, Teetering something uh, may have been like the intention of that i don't know if it really succeeds in doing it basically the goal here is to break all these targets um within a certain period of time and there's also these targets here that give you additional time you get like a, a bonus to it so and i think this is literally the music tank music from the original game which probably uh is whatever as you can see i'm doing a really bad job of this if i could just get that there we go if i just be paying attention um and so your goal is to kind of break all the targets um, and it, it feels pretty good to play like the, the ball like has a, a bouncing noise that I think is really satisfying It's like a clacky wooden kind of noise, but this gets pretty challenging. Here's the second to last level and and uh, This level is pretty pretty long and 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 drawn out and like um, Like it's it's very easy to fall back down and lose a lot of progress um, but whoops So, but it's like these multi-stage areas, basically, um, and you have to be very, very, you know, specific with how you throw these balls. Because so you don't want to throw them too hard, or else they'll fall off to the side or something like that. But you don't want to, you know, not throw them hard enough so they don't make their distance. It's just there's a lot of nuance to this game um, that I feel like um, maybe a lot of the other games don't have as much of. Um, and I will say the final level of this game took me about, or this uh, this mini game took me about three hours to complete. So you know maybe I'm just bad, maybe I'm just awful at it, but man, it was a uh, 
It was a doozy of a level. I'm doing all right, but I think we're about to lose it again. Ah, oh, dang it. Yeah, there it goes. But yeah, I won't go through the whole level, but basically we got probably about halfway through the level there. Um, but you have to get all the way to the top, and if you fall, you have to start the whole thing over. There's no, like, checkpoints or anything like that. So it's it's pretty uh pretty challenging. Um, let's see. Anything else we want to do here? Um, just as, like, a little sun, fu sun fun side fact, uh, I believe this minigame here is created by Skip, the ma the makers of Chibi Robo. One kind of interesting thing is, like, the, all the developers of these minigames are different. So, like, Yuji Naka's company worked on some of this stuff. And so, like, like you have different teams doing different things. Uh, Skip worked on this one. Um, I would not say it's my favorite one. You basically just sit here and, like, you know, use this little leaf to kind of blow yourself around. It's kind of interesting, but uh, it's pretty minimal in uh, the implementation here. Oops. I got blown up. Uh, one bit here that is, uh, let's see if it shows up. These crows that fly in, you gotta shoot them. So it's like a little bit of extra depth there, but uh, yeah, this is kind of it. And it's a little tiring because you gotta sit here and like wiggle the Wii remote over and over and over again. Oops. Got him. So th that pointing actually does rely on the IR pointer, by the way. That might be the one thing in this game that uses it. Get away! <laughs> so, and it's like a handful of courses like this. I think this is probably one of the weaker games, honestly. There's just not a lot going on. I mean, like technically, I guess you could say it's impressive, but like, just because it's technically impressive doesn't mean it's a. I don't know if you call it technically impressive, honestly, but it's just it's probably one of the weaker games in this collection. I feel like. Anyways, that's enough of that. Um. And unfortunately, these these last few minis, I don't think there's really a ton to say about them, but we're already so far in. We might as well show you all the games. Um, I remember this one being like a big E3 thing for a while. Um, or at least I remember this being like one of the showcase games at E3. Um, and so basically kind of the goal is to um, uh, balance this ice these ice cream scoops as they go up uh, and, and try to get them up as high as possible. So... Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of we play motion. Um, you know, I don't think I think this game is less interesting because it, it, it's basically showing off a technology that already kind of had a showpiece in a uh, we we sports resort. But I don't think it's a it's a bad showcase of the technology. I just think you know, for for you know, it, I think they're I think this game mainly exists for the fact that um, we play sold very well. And, um, and there's just probably a, a feel that, you know, hey, because we have this new controller, we can, we can kind of try to recreate the same success. Um, I do think it's cool that so many different, like, development teams have, have their hands in this game, uh, including external, uh, Nintendo developers. A lot of these developers are people, people are companies that people, Nintendo still works with. Probe, not so much because they're gone. Skip, not so much because I think they're also gone. Uh, I think Probe literally has just like one person doing accounting stuff at this point. Um, but, you know, that's how it is. Um, but yeah, and, and so like, this is a lot of interesting development teams that worked on this. If you go to a Wikipedia page, you'll see all the mini games broken out to who made who made what and when. Well, what? What? Who made what? Not when. <laughs> when when this game was released so i did pretty bad there but you know you get the point kind of move it up uh but yeah this is definitely like a, a neat little thing of like hey look how improved this te controller technology is but i feel like some of these some of these mini games don't really feel like they're wii motion plus games they feel like they could have very easily been um um what's it called something on the original wii remote some of them not all of them obviously um so, yeah. That's it for this. Thanks for coming. Like I said, there was an original Wii Play uh, quick play as well. Um, so if you want to check that out, I'll go ahead and link that here at the end of the video. In terms of content that's coming up, though, I don't really have a ton planned. There's probably going to be some kind of Gun Gun Pixies thing coming up here at some point um, for the Nintendo Switch. There's also a Vita version, but it only came out in Japan. Um, so, so probably expect some coverage of that sometime in the near future. 
And, uh, yeah. Other than that, thank you for coming. Wugshowprogram.com is the website. Do a podcast every Monday at 9 a.m. PST. Uh, and a stream every every Thursday at 7 p.m. PST. Playing Martian Gothic right now for the original PlayStation. Pretty cool game. So, so hopefully you enjoy it. Anyways, that's it. Thanks. Bye.